1986, Duke topped the basketball chart. They even had their own song. The Devils took Mike Krzyzewski to his first Final Four. And they were led by a five-star senior class. From an 11 and 17 record as freshmen to the final four as seniors, it's reunion time for the class of 86. Hard to believe it's been 20 years since that talented group made a run at the national championship. A lot has changed over the last two decades, especially here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Three national championship banners and seven more retired jerseys hang in the rafters here. The court they play on is now Coach K Court. But long before all of these new decorations, a young coach, Mike Krzyzewski, had to convince the top high school players to come to Duke. He had a great school to sell, but also Mike Krzyzewski carried something else with him on those recruiting trips, a vision of something special. Tom Suter has more. Coach Mike Krzyzewski. Thanks a lot for all the support. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski accepted the Duke coaching job on May 4th, 1980, and he had his work cut out. Not only did Duke fans and media not know who he was, neither did the nation's top high school basketball players. After an 18 and 13 first season, the cupboard was bare and recruiting was going nowhere. Coach K got players like future NBA great Chris Mullen to listen, but none accepted. So, in the midst of a 10 and 17 second season, and with Duke fans restless, Mike Krzyzewski needed to find some talented players, and more than that, players who believed what he believed. We went after youngsters who would identify with Duke University, and with the promise of maybe this younger coach, his vision would go along, you know, would be, go along with it. If I'm just selling vision, they're not coming. I'm selling vision and going to school at Duke. A six-man recruiting class was brought in, ranked one of the best in the country. The class included Weldon Williams from Illinois, but centered around 6'8 Jay Billis from Rolling Hills, California, 6'8 Mark Allery from Scottsdale, Arizona, 6'5 David Henderson from Drury, North Carolina, and 6'2 Johnny Dawkins from Washington, D.C. So we're just going to try to change things. But as far as pressure being put on, there's no pressure. We're very pleased with our incoming freshman class. We were realistic about them, though, also. At that time, I was trying to make my mark, too. And so basically, we said, let's make our mark together. When he first started recruiting me, I'd never even heard of him. I'd heard of Duke, but I hadn't heard of him. But there was really no draw for me to come to Durham but for the fact that I just fell in love with the idea of playing for Coach K. I mean, I just, I really trusted him. In my recruiting visit, he's visualizing, you know, me as a player in his system, and he's just got, you know, goosebumps on both arms, and, you know, he's, he's getting giddy he, just thinking about it. You can't, you can't pretend that kind of passion. And believe it or not, you know, not every coach brings that kind of passion to a recruiting visit. That was the unique thing for me, and, you know, you could feel it when he was talking about it. And, you know, for me, I said, you know, I want to be a part of something special. How special? I had no idea. But I wanted to be a part of it. There was just something about him, you know. I, I, it really was a decision made with uh, my heart rather than my head. The key member of the class was Johnny Dawkins, sought by just about everybody. Thin of build, but quick as a cat, and as good as they come. Jay Billis had never met Dawkins until a family vacation to D.C. in the summer of 82. Coach K suggested that Billis go to the Dawkins house. When I knocked on the door, uh, a really small skinny guy answered and I said, hi, is your brother here? And he said, uh, who are you looking for? And I said, I'm looking for Johnny Dawkins. And he says, well, I'm Johnny. And I was like, God, we're screwed. <laughs> because he was skinny and small and he just didn't look like a superstar that I would have imagined him to look like. And we got to the playground and he was Superman. You know, a lot of times I'll get credit for, you know, coming to Duke and, and being part of the success of the program, but ultimately it was a part, of, the team was the ultimate, uh, 
I think, catalyst to, to the success that the program has had. For me, as a basketball coach, I'm not sure that I would be here uh, and as successful if it wasn't for Johnny's commitment. And that commitment from that whole class, but especially Johnny, because he is the first legitimate big time player. But like any journey, this one would not be easy. And the class of 86 found that out the summer before their freshman season. So we went over to uh, Chapel Hill to play um, at Woolen Gym in the pickup games. Walter Davis and James Worthy, their existing players, Michael Jordan, Sam Perkins, those guys are all playing in those games. And we got out there, like the crowd kind of developed because it was like, oh, it's the Duke recruits. You know, they're coming in to play. Well, we just got waxed. That was a shocker to me. But it, right away, it, it let that group know that, hey, you know, uh, don't read your press clippings. You know, news alert, you're really not that good. You're going to have to work a lot harder if you ever want to mount anything. And the hard work was just beginning. That first year was like rolling a boulder up a hill. 11 wins, 17 losses. But now, the foundation of Duke's basketball future under Mike Krzyzewski was in place. Well, getting the top talent to come to Duke did not immediately produce winning results. When we come back, a lot of hard knocks on the way to becoming a championship team. We weren't building on anything. We were, we were helping to build the foundation, and the raw material was there. Hey, it's me, your heart. We gotta talk, because I don't like the way you're treating me. We don't go for walks anymore, we don't go to the gym, and what's with the diet? Maybe we ought to have my picture taken, check my plumbing, because just between you, me, and your cholesterol, you could use some serious lifestyle counseling. My friends at Wake Med Heart Center do it all. Education, prevention, diagnosis, intervention, surgery. You get back on track, I get a little TLC. Life goes on. Listen to your heart. Visit hearts.wakemed.org. Introducing Red Zone Clear Gel, our strongest clear gel ever. Old Spice. Fast, aggressive, relentless. Fire has no equal. Or does it? The 300 horsepower Lexus GS. See your Johnson Lexus of Raleigh and Johnson Lexus at Southport. Because my friends and I have in, even when I travel on business, we stay in touch. Hey, Schmitty. With unlimited calls, texts, and picture messaging, it's easy. My name's Schmitty. I have a job. My boss is a really easy. Get in on the Verizon Wireless Network, and now you'll get unlimited in calling plus unlimited in text and pics for just $10 a month. Get started with an LG 5200 and get a second one free. Verizon Wireless, it's the in network. With the recruiting class of 1982, the foundation was there, but there was plenty of room for growth. Their journey began with an 11 and 17 record as freshmen. It ended with a trip to the final four. Bob Holliday takes a look at the growing pains. Before Duke could experience 1986, the Blue Devils first had to survive 1983. We were a bunch of freshmen playing very experienced ACC teams. And, and taking our licks. We were 11 and 17, and we had a lot of um, opportunities to be better, but we didn't know how. We didn't look at ourselves as losers as 11 and 17. We knew we were better than that, but that's why our journey began. Every time we seemed like we were making progress, we'd get punched in the mouth and we'd be flat on our backs looking up at the lights. The brightest lights shone nearby. Carolina had just won the national championship. NC State would become the next NCAA king. While the Tar Heels and Wolfpack were rocking and rolling, the Blue Devils countered with the four freshmen. The music wasn't very pleasant. Duke even lost to Wagner. It was a really hard year, and there was a lot of criticism coming our way, a lot of criticism coming Coach K's way. People saying, why don't you play more zone? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And he never wavered. 
Ralph Sampson is 7-4 National Player of the Year, and he's posting up, you know, myself and Jay Billis, you know, two feet from the basket, and coach refused to play zone. Every other team in the country did, but on principle, we're not going to do that. That's not the Duke way. Things got worse when Virginia dismantled Duke in the 83 ACC tournament. They beat us by about 40, and it was embarrassing, and they just kept running the score up, and we never forgot that. And in the next year, we came back and we vowed that that would never, ever happen again. By now, Duke and Mike Krzyzewski were three years and a barrel full of wins removed from the NCAA tournament. Fans, especially Duke's big givers, grew restless. People wanted him fired, I and mean, you have not turned this program around in the, you know, the three years you've been here, and you can't win with this star-class recruits. You know, what's your problem? Never once did he uh, reference the fact that uh, his job was being questioned, whether he was going to last. The next year, Coach K added a point guard, Tommy Amaker. But most of all, Duke still had Johnny Dawkins. He's the best player Duke's ever had, without question, in my mind. He scored a lot of tough points and won a lot of really tough games that had never been won before. With Dawkins and Amaker in the backcourt, the Blue Devils began to blend and become tougher mentally. Maybe the most important guy of that group was, uh, as far as attitude, was David Henderson's. Uh, David really is as tough a kid that has ever played for me. And, and in the last two or three minutes of the game, just wanted, wanted to win so badly and would get other people to win. By the end of 1984, Duke was winning battles, but not the war. Ultimate victory meant beating Carolina. In 1984, Duke came close in the final game of the regular season. And we wound up losing in double overtime, and it was excruciating. You know, it was a very emotional locker room, and Coach K came in, and he just, he said, everybody look at me. He said, we're going to play them again, and the next time we play them, we're going to win. The next week, they would meet again in the ACC tournament. Coach K, before the game, had said, you know, we're going to win this game, and after we do, we're just going to walk off the floor because we expect to win. And after the buzzer went off, like the dutiful player, I started walking off the floor and I turned around and there's Coach K hugging Johnny in the center court and he won't let him go. <laughs> I was like, what happened to walk off the floor, expect to win? You know, it was a, but that, that's how important the game was. Duke made its first NCAA trips under Mike Krzyzewski in 1984 and again in 1985. The Blue Devils finally won in Carmichael Auditorium in 1985 for the 86 season, Duke added talent and depth from Danny Ferry, Billy King, and Quinn Snyder. I knew that there are other teams as talented or maybe a little bit more talented, but no one would be any better team than we had. Duke roared through its non-conference schedule without a loss and won the ACC's regular season crown, losing only at North Carolina and Georgia Tech. Duke began to draw national attention. The late Al McGuire played lion tamer at what he called the Cameron Indoor Zoo. Duke beat the Tar Heels before a nationwide audience who complete an unbeaten season at home. The ACC tournament in Greensboro gave Coach K his first major championship. The four freshmen were now celebrating seniors. We came in here as, as kind of peons and everybody stepped all over us and uh, now we're ACC champions. So now we've won everything we've played in, you know, regular season, the ACC um, tournament, and the NIT, and we have three banners now. We can put one of those for each year that we lost one, and people need to get off our backs with that, and it feels good to be that successful. The miracle ride nearly came to an abrupt end in the first round of the NCAA tournament against Mississippi Valley. The Devils escaped 85-78. I think this game took us off our high horse a little bit, and I think... I think it's going to help us. I thought that was a kind of an exhale kind of game for us because it was a, a game where we kind of had a sigh of relief when it was over. Uh, but we knew from that point forward, I believe, uh, as, as, uh, as our group, that we were going to make a strong march uh, in a deep run. Duke breeze through its next three games. Ironically, Mike Krzyzewski, the former Army captain, earned his first trip to the Final Four by beating David Robinson and Navy. Well, after sinking the Admiral David Robinson ship, Duke had its ticket to the Final Four. When we come back, the Devils go down to Dallas. Put me in a time cap, so I'd like to go back, being an older coach of that team in that Final Four, 
and uh, try to win the national championship. Well, we want to keep better pressure on the ball. All right, that's the way to run the court and anticipate. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Our last five Wait. minutes. Ready? One, two, three. Wait. Wait. Come on. That's five minutes. Countdown to Baby Cruise. It's going to be an experience. Next ET. We're on mission diaper duty with Tom and all new scenes from MI3. Boss, George Clooney and a Kennedy on the cover of Vanity Fair. Then it's class reunion time. Why the stars of Dynasty are going back to the mansion. The divas, the drama, the delicious memories. We're all going to get together and reminisce and do more, more kiss, kiss. Next ET. Tonight at 7.30 on WRAL. 2.1 seconds left. No team has repeated as champions since 1973. Will the dream die here for Duke? There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! Something different is happening at Golden Corral. Every night on the buffet, you can enjoy a different homestyle dinner, different than the night before. And Monday night is shrimp night at Golden Corral with five kinds of your favorite shrimp, like hot peel and eat shrimp, new plump jumbo shrimp, and crispy golden fried shrimp. Golden Corral, it's a Monday night shrimp lover's dream. Golden Corral, everyone deserves a good meal every day. So the 1986 Final Four was set. It would be Duke, Kansas, Louisville, and LSU making up the field. The Devils drew the Jayhawks in their semifinal. Bob Holiday traveled with the Devils to Dallas, where there was a good blend of basketball and cowboy boots. Destination Dallas. The city of glass and steel hosted its first and only Final Four in 1986 at the crest of popularity for a TV show by the same name. Mike Krzyzewski wanted his team relaxed for the national semifinal game against Kansas. I really thought the two best teams in the country that year were, were Duke and Kansas. And as luck would have it, you know, we both play, we played in the semifinal game and we just knocked the heck out of one another. It was a freshman who would ferry Duke seniors to the championship game. Danny Ferry broke up a tie game with a loose ball basket at one end and a great defensive play at the other. Those two play, plays were a blur for me. You know, I mean, that was a time when I was, uh, didn't know what, what I was doing. <laughs> and to be in a game at that time, I didn't realize what a big and special thing it was. And to make some plays that impacted us getting into the final game, I didn't understand. So now it would be Duke against Louisville for the championship. You know, we were playing well, and it just felt like, you know, we were, you know, we were destined to win that championship. Every loose ball, every oh, loose ball. For all those non-believers, we shall overcome. It's not like we don't know what's at stake, fellas. That's right. There is no tomorrow. That's right. There's no tomorrow. It's not 40 minutes all up. Between the University of Louisville Cardinals and the Duke University Blue Devils. Wagner lost the ball off his sneaker. Here it comes. Knocked it. Oh, what's in the center. Never nervous Purvis, kind of, um, I don't know if we've heard from him much since then, but uh, he certainly made a name for himself uh, uh, for quite some time based on that freshman performance. It's a one game. And whether it was Purvis Ellison's long arms or Duke's tired legs, the Blue Devil shots stopped falling. That was the first game all year long where we didn't shoot the ball well. I thought we ran out of gas. Uh, you know, the team, we weren't as, as deep, you know, at that time. Um, didn't make some of the shots we normally would make, some tired legs. Thought they were a little bit fresher than us. Until the final moments, each Duke player expected to win. The loss to Louisville overtook every member of the team that had overcome so much. The media was talking about where does this Duke team rank in the history of the game. And after we lost that game, all that, all that discussion went away. You hate to pat yourself on the back, but I think we, we represent something good in, in college athletics, and um, I don't think that can be overlooked. That's the last time I'll probably ever play with those guys again on a team and, and how much it has meant to me, and I, I was just hoping that some kind of way we could just get together and go out with a win, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. But uh, I really admire you know, those guys, and we'll be in touch 20 years down the road.
That comment from Johnny Dawkins wasn't just lip service. The 1986 team remains close. And the sting of losing that national championship game still lingers 20 years later. Yeah, no, it really bothers me because I'd love to have that championship ring. Where we started, and we, we did everything but put the cherry on top. It was frustrating. Another way Progressive Direct is so progressive. Say you're on Progressive.com, the leading car insurance website, and you have a question. Just click Talk to Me or call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. A licensed professional will pick up right where you left off, even finish the quote with you. And what's better than not having to start over? Your Bell South Fast Access DSL includes a bubble of protection. So anytime you go online at high speed, you're protected against spam and pop-ups and email viruses. Online security included. Another reason to get Fast Access DSL for just $24.95 a month. Every month. Bell South. Listening. Answering. Looks like everybody's after McDonald's double filet of fish sandwich. Catch one with fries and an icy cold Coke today and play the shark bait game at filetofish.com. The sentiment among the seniors in 1986, it was a wonderful career and a great run with a great group of guys. But would they have been looked at differently as a team had they won the national championship? Still, the further they get away from that bitter defeat, the sharper the big picture becomes. The Cardinals have won the national championship. For those who experienced the loss to Louisville, their memories remain as vivid and painful as they were 20 years ago. I've never forgotten that loss, to be honest. Crushing. Yeah. I still know that game play by play, minute by minute. I've never watched that game. You know, I have a, a tape of it. I never watched it when you've worked your kind of entire life to uh, maybe get a moment like that and you come up a little short, boy, that's a, that's a pretty big void. You just don't forget moments like that because, you know, it was an opportunity to really capture a title that you had been dreaming about. What kid wouldn't want to win the national championship? I mean, it, it was our dream and it's forever. It's for eternity. You have that. We didn't finish. You know. And I feel worse for our, our group you know, that we didn't get that. That loss was only Duke's third of the season, and they had 37 wins, which is still today an NCAA record. You look more at the 37 than you do the third loss? I guess I do. Uh, I'll never forget losing in the national championship game. You know, I'll never forget that. But you know, I look at it as you know, we, we had a great team, we had an opportunity to do something that most teams never have an opportunity to do, and that's to play for the national championship. You know, if I had one thing to do over again, I'd like to be older coaching my 86 team. So maybe I could have helped them a little bit more. Of all the teams that I've coached here, uh, no, one, no team was more deserving of winning it uh, than, that, than that team. Jay Billis, Tommy Amaker, and Johnny Dawkins did earn championship rings as Duke assistant coaches on the title teams of 91, 92, and 2001. Is that void filled somewhat as a coach winning a national championship, or is it different? It's different. I thought it would be filled. I spoke to Coach Amaker, who and I are very close, and he said, Johnny, it's not going to take the place of 86. It never replaces uh, the, the feeling that you can get as a player. No way. After 91, Co uh, Johnny Dawkins called me and said, does it take it away? And I said, no. As players in 1986, winning the title would have elevated their level of greatness as a team. But what this group experienced at Duke has not faded with age. They are teammates for life. No championship trophy can duplicate or 
take the place of what the journey that took place to get it. And that's what I value. You know, the time that you spend with those guys. You know, they're brothers of mine. The best four years of my life, bar none, uh, were here at Duke. I met my wife. Um, my three best friends uh, were my teammates here. And I got to learn uh, a lot about basketball, a lot about life from um, one of the you know, great men that I've ever met in, in Coach K. We really believed in him. Uh, we believed in what he was saying. We believed in his vision. And uh, I believed in him then, and I swear by him now. It changed my life. I mean, my life would have been so different without this. The 86 team is once again scattered across the country, but they remain inseparable. They take time for phone calls or make time for gatherings. Most are still involved with basketball, part of a new team that draws from their old one. Going from 11 wins as freshmen to 37 as seniors, number one in the country and all that kind of stuff. And then just missing it prompted them to do more. They didn't go and have it ruin their lives. They said, look, we were terrific and we're gonna be terrific in what we do in our, in our own lives, and, and that's, what, that's what they've done. Johnny Dawkins is Duke's associate head coach. His backcourt mate, Tommy Amaker, is head coach at Michigan. David Henderson spent the last six years calling shots at Delaware. Jay Billis is one of the top basketball analysts at ESPN. After a seven-year NBA career, Mark Allery is a partner in a Washington financial group. Quinn Snyder was coach at Missouri for the past six and a half years. From the NBA front offices, Billy King is the president of the Philadelphia 76ers, and Danny Ferry is molding the Cleveland Cavaliers as their general manager. The 86 team uh, is really the foundation of our program, and not just what they did as, as students and as athletes here, but what they've done afterwards. They serve as the, the great example of what we would like every class to be. For Coach K, picking a favorite team would be like picking a favorite child or grandchild. It's just impossible to do. But Duke basketball under Coach Mike Krzyzewski may not have been as successful were it not for the commitment from the class of 86.